Welcome to another Fountain Pen Day Review. Today's review, we have another Nakia, Nakaya pen. Um, I'll unbox it quickly, just for those who haven't seen it before. Uh, the other videos will have a more detailed unboxing if you want to see that, as I know everyone wants to see the pen. Inside is a bubble wrap box, uh, your paperwork, which includes, again, the bill, can't avoid it, and information from, from Nakaya themselves about your pen and thanking you for buying it and yada yada. Okay. In the bubble wrap. Beautiful box. And always stickered. And you can see this long description of exactly what's in it. We have a Nakaya. Neo Standard Writer. Writer meaning it's a clip. Cigar versions are clipless. Uh, it's a Kikiel, which is the color, which is it's a blue. I had got the fumigated silver clip. And I got the rhodium plated uh, nib as well this time around, which accents the fumigated clip really well. This one's a soft medium, and I had uh, John Mottoshoff stub it for me. So it made for an, an interesting combination. You know, I wanted to change it up a little bit. Inside, wonderful wood box. Really nice. You know, it's a nice feel. It's a nice, uh, you don't take them out often. I know I don't, but. It is nice that it, it comes with such a uh, well done presentation, soft inside. Um, you get a box of platinum cartridges, ink cartridges, converter. Mine has an extra converter because I also ordered uh, the Snowflake, uh, sorry, Snowflower converter. Uh, it's also uh, already inflated. I thought it would match the pen well. I'll show you a slight disappointment in it. Not disappointment, but kind of. And inside is your kimono. Inside that, of course, it's a wonderful Nokia pen, Nakaya pen. I had to listen to the videos many times to make sure I was saying it right. And there's still arguments on whether any of us are saying it correctly. Um, here you can see the fumigated clip. It's got a nice texture to it. Make sure I keep us in focus today. There you go. Really nice clip. And I think it accents the blue well. And you can see from the blue that the coloring of it. Um, and when I hold it down, it, it's a much darker, you know, outside of the light, it's very dark. Not black. I mean, you know it's a blue pen. But you can see from here, it doesn't show as much. But when you look at it closely, you can really see the, uh, the detail in the color. I love the shape, too. The Neo Standard is really uh, a good shape for me. Again, I always say it, but it's true. I, I do have larger hands, so... And this one, you can see the fitting. Some people had spoken before on uh, Fountain Pen Network about the fitting of the blind cap right here. Um, that there was a, a slight misstep. Uh, any of them that had that, John pretty much adjusted. I have heard that there are a couple out there that were not as perfect as they should be. Um, we'll get to the nib and the good stuff in a second. But I'll show you on the underside. And again, I'm going to hold some angle. Like right here, you can see there's a screw inside, which can be turned and it can be adjusted. I haven't done it. I don't recommend anybody do it. Again, if you unadjust that and move this blind cap around and then retighten it too tight, God forbid you crack anything, you're really up a creek. Um, here are the threads in the ebonite cap. Remember, these are all hand cut. There's videos online that show a uh, kindly elderly man, older man, sorry. I don't want to be rude in the way I say it, but um, an older gentleman that cuts these by hand with the tools and literally sits there with the foot pedals pumping away. It's amazing how he does it. So, but the color, very nice. I was uh, very pleasantly surprised. There's a, a purple one out there, and I forgot the name. Let me sound a little closer. Uh, that's $100 more, and I asked, uh, 
I think it was John Alla about it, and she said that it came down to, and she asked John, and John said that it came down to uh, the process of making that color. This color, the Kikyo, and that other purple, I can't remember which what the name is, I'm sorry, um, are very, very close. You know, this does not look purple to me. It may in, this, in the video, but in person it doesn't. It looks like a really deep navy blue. Alright, that's the cap, and for the pen itself, right up. What I like about this one too is that the threading uh, is also blue, it's also colored. The uh, Akai Toranami, the desk pen that I have, the threading is, is actually left uh, raw ebonite black. And then we have this wonderful nib that, like I said, John uh, customized for me. It's a uh, a soft medium and he stubbed it so it's got some nice flexibility to it and the same stub qualities that you like in a pen and being a medium it's not a super broad stroke but because it's a soft medium you can get a little more line variation with it than you normally would if you just had a regular medium pen stubbed which is something that that I like not everybody does some people like a very firm nib and they want it stubbed uh, and I had it just a regular stub so that it's more uh, it's smoother on the edges and it won't catch as much. It does have a learning curve uh, to writing with. Feet is plastic. Uh, the only slight disappointment, and this is what I want to get into that I had, was with my converter. Now I got it rhodium plated also. But as you see as I uncap, the, scent, the, the connector here, I don't know what it's called, I'm sorry, is brass or brass colored, gold colored. And the converter is rodent plated. It's really nice. I mean, beautiful. Um, separate this. And you can see it's hand painted. Uh, hand painted. Hand painted. Uh, it's, I guess it's done first in brown and then overcoated with silver. So that when you look at it from one side, it's got the brown. And then on the outside of it, it's, go, it's silver. Really nice. Again, these converters, uh, they can be disassembled. The first one, it was really tight, so I, I had a hard time getting it apart. Sorry, let me turn this so I'm not banging into the camera over and over again. Sorry. We're back. Uh, so to take this apart, you're going to turn it counterclockwise. Clockwise is this way, counterclockwise this way. It's simple. Just grab it here on the metal part, hold this section here, and give it a turn. Obviously, I've taken this apart so it's looser, but it's a little snug the first time. Cap comes off, put that down. Uh, the other part just comes right off. Now, if it was obviously if it was turned in, it's not going to turn in now that I took it apart. But in any case, it comes off. Then you can unscrew this part, and you can obviously you can put uh, silicone on here if it needs to be smoothed up a little bit. And then there's this small plastic washer. It's easy to put it all apart even if you've uh, disassembled it and you think, well, I've got five pieces and how does it go? But you can see the uh, flat spots on here and they match the flat section here because it's not perfectly round. Focus. Sorry. And here you can see it's flat as well. So when you put it back together there's only one way that this little piece is going to go on you can turn it it drops in and it's the same front or this either side of it is exactly the same so there's no way you can screw that part up push it in slightly this screws back on like so and it doesn't matter what position this uh, the, the piston is in at the time that you slide this this over and it goes over. I always reverse turn it until it clicks, and then I know that I've got it threaded exactly right so I don't misalign it. And you just tighten it down. Once it gets to its stopping point, I just give it a one little nudge, and that's it. And uh, these converters do work really smooth. Really nice. And they hold a good amount of ink. I don't know how much ink exactly, um, but I will measure that at one point. The other thing I like about their converters is you can see this is uh, soft silicone right here. And on the inside of the nib, where it actually goes in, 
has a good amount of depth to it. It may not pick it up 100%, but you can see that there's a longer stem in there. So when you line it up, like it's touching right here, and you can see when I push in how far down it goes. So it's got a really nice fit to it. Excellent. Really like that a lot. Uh, inside the barrel, you can see again more of the uh, raw ebonite where the uh, threads are hand cut. And here too, the you can see the threads are painted again. A beautiful color. I was very uh, pleasantly surprised. All right, before we get to the writing sample. Uh, everyone always likes to talk about it. To take the cap, to turn, it's one, two, and three. Just about three and a half turns, we'll remove the cap. Give one last shot of that nib. And the nib is clean as can be. I, I cleaned it, but I did have blue ink in it. That's the only reason you see a little bit of the, uh, the uh, outline there, a little bit blue. And you can see the marking is 14 carat, and it is uh, a flexible medium. Okay, way longer than I thought, I'm sorry. Um, but we'll get to the writing sample. The other last thing before we go to it, this is what I really like about the Neo Standard, is that longer section, so that it gives me a much larger area to grip. Very nice. Okay, writing sample, let's go. All right, we're back. I fibbed a little bit. I want to give you a quick size comparison and, and weigh it in. Um, Remember, the weight is going to be in grams, the whole pen uninked. Sorry. <laughs> okay, in grams, it's 28 grams on the nose. Cap, 9 grams. Which means... And doesn't roll away. 19.2, it's probably a little off, but it should be 19. Okay. Size comparison. Uh, close in size. Visconti, uh, Homo sapiens, bronze. The weight is obviously not even, you know, comparable. Homo sapiens, bronze is much heavier, but size comparison is close. Um, nib size. Nib size is close as well. Makes for a pretty picture right there. Hmm. Okay, sorry. Um, also, let's see. Common pen, Twisby 580. It's uh, it's also close in overall size too. And then we have a Mont Blanc 146, which it's also fairly close. It's, it's definitely larger than the 146. It's probably closer to a 149, which I don't have. But that should give you a, a reference of where the pen is at as far as size. Again, this pen is not postable. Don't bother. You just will look silly. Can you? I'll do it once. I'll show you. Everyone wants to know. It, it, it'll sit on the top, and it just kind of flops around. And, and you can see. I mean, it just... Isn't, it's not the way it's supposed to be done. Nobody recommends doing it from Nakaya to Chum Adashaw to just about everybody on the boards. Um, let's put in some uh, J. Urban Ocean Blue. This is the uh, limited edition color. Again, it's just a standard converter, so it's in. And again, the breather hole. It, you want to make sure you get it down far enough. Draw up some ink. A good fill. Always cap your ink so that you don't drop it. Make a mess. Alright, we'll wipe the section off. Again, I love that these sections on these pens wipe off so easy. And they come so clean so quick. So, we've got a nice full ink. And you can see the uh, the Snowflakes really show up. Really nice. Looks good. 
So we'll start with a Rhodia dot pad. Sorry, I'm moving around a little bit. But we'll get situated and you can see what she'll do. Focus. Now it did have a little learning curve because of the stub nib and it, while being very smooth. I did have a few catches here and there, but again, that's that's me. That's not the pen. You might hear it like catch every now and again. So nice flex. But of course, if you just write without any pressure, good line. This color comes out good. It's drawing really quick because these lights are so warm, but it lays down a really nice patch of ink. A little wet, but it's got excellent flow. Um, I did ask for a 7 out of 10 on the uh, ink flow of this. It does flow. Ask for seven out of ten. Um, and again, this should show a good variation when I do. Sometimes I'll do this at the end of a signature. But nice, really, really. I enjoy seeing that. I'm definitely uh, someone who likes the flex, the little railroad. Beautiful. Really, really nice. I enjoy it a lot. Like I said, there was just that one section here where it's gold that I didn't expect, but you you don't see it until you uh until you take it apart. So at this time I remind everyone that Fountain Pen Day this year is gonna be November first. See I wrote a little quick and I caught it. But it is butter smooth. I'm shaking the camera like crazy. I'm sorry. Messy, messy, messy. Again, while my handwriting isn't great, it's usually not that sloppy. It is very difficult. You can see I'm holding the camera down here, trying to make sure that you can uh, get a good view of what's going on. But you can see, again, you can see a lot of the line variation in this and how the, uh, the nib flows really nicely. Um, really no skipping. And the nib is, uh, it's really nice. And it was it's nice that I know if there was anything I didn't like about it, uh, John would take care of. I actually have another Nakia that's coming, Nakaya that's coming back. Um, and I'm going to do a review of that next week. So it's going to be a double Nakaya week. And it's, uh, it's a pretty special nib. I really, I really can't wait to get it. It should be here Wednesday. So, all right. This went very long, but I wanted to at least get this out there and show everybody a different Nokia with, with a, a nib that was done custom and wow that's so ugly let's try that again um, that, that shows a, a custom nib and how nice they can be and how much flow you can get I'm just doodling but Anyways, I'm rambling, I'm doodling, so I want to thank you all for watching, and have a great day.
Enjoy. Okay, we're back just for a second here. I uh, wasn't happy the fact that it skipped a couple of times. That skipped, I'm sorry, railroad a couple of times. And you can see here, after I finished shooting, I started writing a little more and I saw more and more railroading. It doesn't happen with this pen that often. Uh, so I had a feeling it was the ink. I'd never used the uh, J.R. Bond in here before. So we're going to start with a fresh page really quick and add a minute to this video. I cleaned it out and I reloaded it with uh, some Noodler's uh, Liberty's Elysium, which I have used and never had an issue. And it was certainly the ink, because you will see, there there really is no uh, no flow issues of, of any kind with this at all. Um, all right, so especially when I was pushing the nib, we refilled it with noodlers. Plenty of expression, plenty of flex, with no railroading. Yeah, a little railroad, sorry. But, it was just disappointing that the other ink just didn't flow as it should have. And I thought it was more the lights than anything else, but it really wasn't. You can say that there's a lot of, uh, there is a lot of flex, not a lot, a lot, but, you know, there is some good expression. There's certainly some incredibly fine lines to a nice broad line right in here. And again, I just wanted to show you that, you know, all pens can be affected by the inks that they use in this one. This one certainly was in review, and I wanted to make sure that, uh, that we were fair. Yeah, I mean, minor, minor, as I, as I pushed it, but. A beautiful line variation. Okay, so thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed this review. Have a great day.